I just got angry last night. I All right, we're doing this. Welcome to the Comedy's Best Kept Secret Tour Zoom. Uh, apologies for starting a minute late here, folks. Uh, we're uh, trying to get all the panelists where they need to be. Uh, if anything could go, ha could go bad this week, uh, it has happened that way. Uh, so thank you all for being here. This is Comedy's Best Kept Secret Tour Zoom. Uh, we are going to do a comedy show in panels like this. You see how we are? There's going to be four of us. Uh, we're going to be doing a show like this. You can chat with us in the chat window. You can Q&A with us in the Q&A window. It's the same thing. Uh, just don't heckle us. We're all working from home. Uh, we all have very low self-esteem. Just you're gonna ruin our day. Just don't don't heckle us. Just say nice things in there. You can go participate in the games that we're playing. You can participate in uh, a positive way. Do that if you can. Uh, if you can tip, uh, we would love it. Venmo.com slash CBKS tour. Uh, what else? If you serve in the military, thank you for being here. Thank you for your service. Um, yeah, we're going to do a show, panel show. We're going to be telling jokes, doing fun things, but uh, in this way. We're not at any time going to pretend like we are at a comedy club and you are in our audience and do like jokes to camera and standing in front of a brick wall. I don't think it makes any sense. We're not doing it. Uh, but yeah, we're doing this. All right. I'm going to go uh, clockwise from my screen below me. I got uh, Zach Petrovich. Zach, thanks for being here, man. What's going on? Not much, brother. How you doing? Doing all right. Uh, you, I saw you had this uh, fantastic road trip. You like went like legitimately to the other coast and then came back. How was that? What happened? Yeah, no, it was fantastic. Uh, so I was, uh, I, I got a little stir crazy during the quarantine, went on this road trip uh, with one of my friends who uh, considers himself uh, a uh, warlock, uh, you know, so uh, it's one of those things, you know, you, you link up with these people in Brooklyn and all of a sudden you're going cross country visiting nudist cults. Uh, our first uh, trip, our first like stop, uh, he didn't tell me anything about it. It was just a campsite. And uh, I get there and I look like, you know, how I look. I'm in like a t-shirt, my chain. I'm like, you know, I'm getting out. I look like I just walked out of Brooklyn. And uh, this old man starts driving up with me on a, a uh, on, on an ATV. Yeah. And uh, I'm just like, okay, on here. And he's only wearing a, a cowboy hat and, you know, no shirt, but it's hot. So what the fuck, you know? Uh, and he comes through. And as he pulls up, I see that he also has an oxygen tank strapped to this ATV. And uh, he's wearing nothing except for the hat. <laughs> so I'm saying, oh, wow, this is, a, uh, this is a different kind of campsite. And I look at him and I, I kind of give him the locker room eye. You know, I'm like kind of looking up and talking to him. I'm like, oh, that's, that's cool. What's up? And he's like, hey, man, how you doing? I'm like, oh, you know, I'm doing great. You know, you know, living the dream, not yours, but somebody's. So. <laughs> Yeah, so that was like my first little trip uh, into the void, and we went all the way to Nevada, and uh, we had a great time. Came back in a couple of days, so. Nice. Yeah, man, I, uh, I, I, I don't know if you know this, I did my album at a nudist colony. It's called Naked and Amused, and so the, I learned a bunch uh, at, out of that experience. So one of the things is like, they always say like, when you get nervous, you're supposed to picture the audience naked, and that will make... <laughs> That will make you relax. Well, this is a room full of like 85 naked people and uh, I couldn't have been more uncomfortable. That's terrible advice. Uh, so just so you know, that's not the way to do it. Uh, so yeah, so thanks for being here. Appreciate you, where are you? You're, you're in somewhere in PA. Yeah, I'm in the underground bunker in Pennsylvania. Yep. All right, I'm gonna skip Alex for now. She's done a phone call. I'm gonna skip right ahead to her. Or is she ready? We're having some audio issues. Hey, no, you're, can you hear us? Yeah, now I can. I can hear you. Uh, we're crushing it. Uh, welcome to the show, Alex Cole. Uh, where are you on Earth? I am at my friend's house <laughs> using her computer, which I've never used a Mac before. Oh, nice. Very yeah. cool. Welcome to the Mac world. Uh, where on the planet, though? Ah, uh, LA right now. Nice. Very cool. Uh, well, as some of some of you, some of the people may be watching know, uh, you are an adult film um, provocateur. I don't know what words to use. Adult film star? Sure. I, I say performer because I, yeah. like I don't know. I don't feel like a star. I feel like you have to be a household name to be a star. Um, I think you're there. I met you. I met you when you had about a tenth the followers. I keep I keep checking in. I, I'm looking at you like a stock. I predicted. I'm like, yo, I, I bought uh, I bought Alex at 12,000 followers. <laughs> was it that far back jesus um yeah yeah no it's blown up uh being in mainstream porn really uh exposes you to a lot more people zach i'm so sorry i couldn't hear your your story before and then i had to walk away i had to figure out how to turn the volume up on here <laughs> even the even the people oh, that were 
even the people that were watching and had volume walked away for Zach's story. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I felt like that was the perfect uh, compliment to his story. Somebody walking away <laughs> to protect their sensibility. Like I yeah. <laughs> Not today. Yeah. Not today with this guy. It's great. Um, well, okay. So what's your favorite part about being a porn star, I guess? Um, you know, I think after doing the, the porn part for a little over a year, I think the porn part, the best part is meeting all the people. Yeah. Um, and, you know, of course, getting to have sex with really cool people. But mainly it's meeting people like meeting you meeting all the performers i work with that kind of stuff meeting the directors it's really nice yeah Everybody's generally really awesome and i think that's the best part that and when fans are like hey i have this fetish for this thing and you made me feel better about having it that's that's really awesome yeah that's the that's the one part i appreciate and that's uh and that's the vibe of the porn Center appeal podcast which i've had you on i think twice uh is yeah is you're trying to destigmatize this thing it's weird it's we, we still have this weird like ideas about porn and porn people and uh, and they're way wrong uh so I, you know i i used to be okay so i've i've evolved over time and i'm not saying i'm right or anything but it's my my ideas changed because at first i started camming and i was very like we need we need to remove the stigma and people need to accept me and all this kind of stuff and now i'm at a part of my life where i'm like i don't give a fuck if anybody accepts me i don't care about the stigma it's fine i i want the stigma to be removed around people's personal sex lives but I, yeah. I'm kind of okay with the stigma around me, like fucking people for money on camera. I'm kind of cool with it because if there weren't a stigma against it, uh, everyone would do it. I think we've kind of seen that with OnlyFans. Yeah. Uh, where when people are, you know, going through this time and I'm glad OnlyFans is there, everyone's joining. So I think we're moving as a culture more toward where uh, porn and stuff like that will be more accepted, but that means it'll also be much lower paid. So sure. it's gonna go through some kind of an evolution here. So yeah. the stigma means that I can fund the life that I'm living and that I can support my family and stuff. So if that's what it takes, fuck it. Throw a tomato at me on the street. It's fine. Yeah, I'm still going to do the shit that I enjoy. Yeah, I love that you, I love that you always have a, a lar like big perspective in mind. That's one of my favorite things about you. Uh, it is interesting, yeah. So that now everybody, everybody, everybody does have their own OnlyFans. Just my so Frigolette Feet has its own OnlyFans page. So guys, check that out. Um, <laughs> Jason, uh, finishing the circle here uh, in the in the the clockwise fashion. Where are you yeah. uh, on Earth? I am uh, in New York City. Uh, with Jason Salmon in the, in the stigma of comedy. Uh, yeah. Also, very stigmatized uh, group <laughs> yeah. of people uh, for a way different reason. People are like, I look, I look way better than that person, and probably have more sex. That's what they say about all of us all the time. So, uh, what's the best thing that's happened in 2020, as far as you're concerned? Uh, I got to be honest. This whole pandemic was a huge rebranding for me. Uh, this is, I mean, like before the pandemic, lazy. Now quarantined you know like it's <laughs> everything about it i've been able to shift the whole discussion you know people are like oh he's anti-social no i'm social just distanced you know <laughs> perfect it works out. yeah i spent my whole life looking like i just got out of prison now everybody looks like they just got out of prison i'm on new york city streets everybody's living their lives in these tiny spaces and then they get out on the sidewalk and they're like you know they do that they do that uh that whole uh Shawshank Redemption moment when they get out on the sidewalk. <laughs> it's, you know, this is, this is my world. I'm like, I used to, I, I grew up in Texas. I used to have to say, bless you. Every time somebody sneezed, Psh, not during a viral pandemic, somebody sneezes, I stare them dead in the eye. I'm like, you know what you did, you know, <laughs> that feels so much better to be judgmental <laughs> as opposed to apologetic. It's, it is yeah, fun. this whole this whole thing has been great. Yeah. I do, <laughs> I I do like honest. when a, when an era repurposes behavior because I've been I've been really excited lately about the fact that like the further we get towards like uh, conservationism, uh, the more gross yeah. you can be as a person. Like uh, it used to be that like if you didn't flush the toilet at your house, you were disgusting. But now I'm green. Right. So I really like the yeah. The repurposing. <laughs> you are. I mean, sometimes <laughs> literally, depending on your diet. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, that's the great thing about this has been that, uh, I've, I've just like, I, I went, there was a period during this pandemic that I weighed the same as I did in high school and had the same haircut, which was an amazing, like synergy of memories. Uh, and so I just watched John Hughes films for an entire week. 
Sure. Well, thanks yeah. for being here. Thanks everybody for being here. Um, let's uh, <laughs> let's kick let's kick off this show. Let's let's start off with because uh, we've already we've already uh, like voided this PG thirteen rating that I had in my head uh, that could that could possibly happen. Uh, the show is always <laughs> PG thirteen two R whenever we get to R, but we're there. We're at R. So let's yeah. do a Mary Bang kill. Really? We're gonna do a Mary Bang kill. Um, and because of who's been in the news lately, it's been bumming me out to use real people. So today we're just gonna do uh, U- U.S. Open tennis. U.S. Okay. Open Golf and U.S. Open Borders. Mary Bank Kill, uh, Zach, what are you going to do? U.S. Open Tennis, U.S. Open Golf, U.S. Open Borders. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna kill tennis because uh, I find it to be a uh, ridiculous sport. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to marry golf, but I'm marrying for money. And <laughs> I'm going to bang the border because we know it's open. So... <laughs> Alex, what do you do? Mary Bank Kill, uh, U.S. Open Borders, U.S. Open Tennis, U.S. Open Golf. See, I have similar reasoning, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill golf. I'm sorry. I know I know people that like golf. I, I, can't, I can't stand it. Um, unless it's mini golf, I guess. It's, it's kind of fun then, I guess. Maybe a little. Not really. I tried. Um, so I, I'll, I'll marry tennis, also for the money, but I'm definitely Uh-oh. fucking open borders. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, 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 there's something about open borders that just gets me wet. <laughs> into a river. I don't know. It, it might but, be the Rio Grande specifically. It might be, but I'm definitely wet. So <laughs> either way, it, it's just going to slide. Right in. That's fair. So, all right. Uh, how are you, how you feeling, Jason? I'm, you know what? Here's my thing is because of all of the uh, weird sex and killing that might be happening uh, by government officials at the border, I feel like I just need to marry them and just, you know, like somehow bring them into the fold. Uh, so golf is easy to kill. Uh, I do like mini golf, but maybe not. I just like when short people play golf. That's uh, what I like. So I call that mini golf. I don't know if that's what... Uh, you were talking about and uh yeah i would uh i would i would bang tennis because uh i mean i gotta be honest women's tennis is uh way more interesting and so uh you know i feel like uh i don't know i feel like that might be a punishment for them though that's uh, I'm, I'm just really trying to <laughs> but i don't know how else to play it <laughs> i don't yeah, this is a difficult one. It's actually, it would have been much easier if I just used Disney princesses, I'm finding on this one. So, <laughs> yeah, well, my, my whole thing is when I say I'm going to bang tennis, the first image that came to mind was Novak Djokovic. And I'm like, that would hurt, hurt me, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you banging the Joker. Uh, all right, so let's do, I'm going to do. Look, we're both, we're both passionate people. I'm not going to yeah. deny that. Yeah, and you both, and you, and you both, uh, well, he and well, he had like a really. He went from like nothing to like maximum, like number one guy, and then back to nothing again. So that's a weird. Right. Which is a, exactly how I describe us. My the the sexual act for me. I go from <laughs> nothing to maximum guy to nothing again. So what you're saying <laughs> and is, then I nap. you're a grower, not a shower, is what you're saying. <laughs> I'm a giver, not a shiverer. I like to say that. <laughs> That's really creepy. All right, I'm gonna, is, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, bang, I'm gonna bang tennis. Um, I just like, I like, the, I don't know. I really do like U.S. Open tennis. I'm wanting to go for years in New York City. It's a good thing. I like it. I'm gonna bang it uh, for the experience. U.S. Open borders. I think you guys brought up some good points. So I'm marrying U.S. Open borders for the longevity and for the uh, uh, just, you know, just for the benefits. And then I guess I kill U.S. Open golf. Honestly, that's mostly like middle-aged white men still. Uh, so most of those guys are going to get canceled in the next couple of years anyway. So I may as well get ahead of it. And kill all <laughs> get them out of their misery. Yeah. At first I thought you said cancer and then, and then, <laughs> and then I realized you said canceled and I'm like, Oh, that's worse. <laughs> 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 they might all get cancer too. Yeah, you, can get you can survive cancer. You cannot no, survive you can cancer. Plastic surgery and change your face. Yeah. So you can that's, survive being canceled. A that's little true. Bit. Yeah. I like I like the I like the I like that perspective. I like I like I like Alex's perspective that like uh you can just fake There's always an death. exit. Just have another face. Cancer, you could just fake your own death so Louis C. Gay can just start <laughs> over and yeah. And the and the and the possibility that that his career was was gonna go exactly the way it went, and he put twenty five years into it. He can just start again tomorrow. No big deal. Just get your face changed. No big deal. 
I mean, it's, I have a can-do attitude. I understand if you don't, but uh, I'm going to continue to be positive. And She's right, Dan. Plastic surgeons. Yeah, well, I think, actually, you could argue that that was, um, that, that was uh, Caitlyn Jenner's uh, move, right? That, like, uh, uh, Bruce ran a bunch of people over on the highway, and then all of a sudden, Caitlyn came back with a new perspective. So I like that idea. I like that Paula Dean can just come back as a dude, and we would, we'd be totally accepting. Paul Dean. <laughs> Paul, I, I would he could come back as a French dude, Paul Ludin. He could just be, <laughs> <laughs> could just be <laughs> Dean Paula. I think that'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, but there we go. He's like Julia Child. <laughs> I think the genius of the Caitlyn Jenner move wasn't just changing Jenners, but coming up with the name Caitlyn, who nobody's going to be able to figure out. You're like, you're like, if she had gone with Joan Jenner. People would have been like, oh, Joan Jenner, I know her. Somebody's like, Caitlin, they're like, eh, I don't know how to spell that. I just. <laughs> could be a Y, there could be a K, we don't know. All right, <laughs> let's, let's uh, Stassi Schroeder from Vanderpump Rules. It doesn't really matter. I needed just some way to pitch into this. She, she admitted she was a Karen. She's trying to get her juju back because uh, they kicked her off the show. I think she said some stuff she shouldn't have said. She got canceled. She's trying to undo it by claiming to be a Karen, which maybe is not the way to do it. But who's your favorite Karen from literature TV or just somebody that you know in your life? Favorite Karen, Zach? Oh, uh, Karen uh, from Goodfellas, without a doubt. Just, Wait, just you, like, catch us up. Pretend like... What? Catch us up. Pretend like we don't know who Karen from, from Goodfellas oh, is. Oh, right. Lorraine Bracco from uh, Scorsese's 1990 excellent film, Goodfellas. Uh, she dumped a boatload of coke down a toilet. All right? You can't, you can't have Karen dumping boatloads of coke. That's all the money we had, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have the same interpretation of Karen, but I like your answer. Alex, what's a, what's a Karen from, uh, from history or literature that you, that you love or appreciate? This is also going to be off topic, but the first thing I thought of was uh, Repsion here on YouTube, his uh, Karen series where he, he shows different videos of different Karens. Yeah. Oh, it just makes me so happy in a weird fucking way. <laughs> it's just, like over and over, there's like fucking 15 Karens on the series now. They're amazing. They just get worse and worse and you think they can't, but they can I forgot to set this up. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm too far into the into the lexicon for, on this one. But just to clarify, a Karen is somebody who's going to call the manager if something doesn't yeah. go her way. All right, just <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. You think Rocco isn't calling a manager? No, yeah. she was she was complicit in the whole thing. She was didn't she spit on her own floor at the when the cops came? Um, no, that Mickey. That was Mickey Conway. You fucking half a dude. <laughs> To be like fair, that, Lorraine Bronco would have had the manager killed. Yeah. Excuse right. me. I She's need your to whack him. <laughs> Jason, who's your favorite Karen from uh, from history, literature, or entertainment? Look, I, I went a little more abstract here. I wanted, I was going to go with the main guy from the Count of Monte Cristo, uh, okay. which I, I refer to him as the Karen <laughs> of Monte Cristo. You know? I, I think he's a, he just basically, he, you know, he, he got wronged and he just spent his entire life getting back at everyone slowly without them knowing and just ruining everybody's lives. I'm like, that is the most Karen novel I've ever read. To I be like fair, it may be the only novel I've ever read. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So he sounds more like an Italian grandfather. He just like slowly uh, yeah. cut people off and he's like, you're dead to me. And then he <laughs> spent his entire life uh, trying to get even. I like that idea. I just feel like one glass of wine would have helped that guy out a little, you know? <laughs> just chill out, look at a vista. So, um, Hawaii, I just found this out. Hawaii's letting people with COVID uh, in without having to quarantine. Uh, they have no economy without tourism. So it's an aggressive move, but it could be useful if we just strand everybody in Hawaii and then we can maybe actually solve this problem that we could have solved as a country didn't. Uh, what would, where else would she, should we make a COVID hub that might, that might be useful to us? We could just leave those people, Zach. Jacksonville. <laughs> Just yeah. no explanation. Just <laughs> yes, <Lord>. yes. <laughs> you know what's you know what's, we you know what's weird is that was a genius move because the second he did that, I started coming up with reasons it was Jacksonville. <laughs> that was brilliant, Zach. That was brilliant. <laughs> no explanation necessary. Alex, where would you strand a bunch of COVID people? I 
I wouldn't, so this is really difficult. Um, fuck, I mean, there's already a shit ton of cases in LA, so as soon as I drive out, I guess that would be. <laughs> just, just lock it down? I don't know. I just think it's just, I don't know. I have no answer for this one. Yeah, it's, you're too sweet. I've, I, 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 I didn't am. give any consideration you're the fact that you're too sweet. You're me mean things to say. <laughs> let's, play, let's play a game called Kill, 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 and we'll, and we'll just make Alex answer all of that. <laughs> just watch me slowly, like, <laughs> melt into my chair. Jason, uh, where would you where would you strand people other than Hawaii? Or what's a good what's a good what's a good answer for this question that I framed about Hawaii letting people in about quarantine? Well, first of all, I think Hawaii is letting people in just because they need people to buy that produce. Have you ever been to Hawaii? It's so expensive there. Like you can't like they're like nobody's gonna buy this. <laughs> these these people are having stuff shipped in by Amazon. We need people stuck here who don't have an Amazon account to deliver to, you know, <laughs> that's what we need. So yeah, I think, uh, I think the Hawaii thing is great. I would do sort of a love boat slash fantasy Island mashup where it would be like, Hey, you won. You, yeah. You won the ultimate Liberty where you'll never have to wear a mask. It's on a boat in the ocean. It's called the love boat. You'll probably find love. You will transmit stuff. So, you know, whatever's <laughs> going to happen is it's going to be. Yeah, I think that would be an adventure. And I think there should be just like closed circuit, like, you know, cameras everywhere. Just watching the whole thing. Just a I, full on I reality show. I, yeah, Truman Show type thing. Yeah. yeah. COVID show. Yeah. I think we all watch it. That's how I feel about the, these uh, these survival shows. It's like the survival shows have gone from putting experts on the show to just putting random passive people on the show that have like made a fire once and like sent in a good video. <laughs> yeah, right. Like every one of these reality shows, like the one there's the one naked and afraid, right? And they're like, look, just just go on an island for 21 days. Uh, that show should just be called Will They Die? I think that's where we're at. <laughs> uh, with these survival shows and I, and I and I used to watch them to get information and then I realized during the quarantine that, that none of the information that I had for surviving uh, is useful like I'm like oh I can make a fire out of sticks how does that help me in my kitchen in March during a quarantine it doesn't help at all so mm. I like that Hawaii also there I didn't realize this about Hawaii with the pricing they're 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 uh, I guess their policy is just like where else are you gonna go is that how it works Jason well, I mean, I think it, it literally just takes it because they can't grow everything on the island. So it's, right. it, 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 it's a legitimate cost. Like it yeah. costs to get stuff out there. So you just have to pay so much more. And they're like, nobody wants to buy this stuff, you know, because Amazon will ship something to Hawaii for cheaper than Hawaii's grocery yeah. stores can get it. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, so the, yeah, they're uh, so that needs to be their motto is where else are you gonna go? Whereas Pennsylvania's yeah. motto is uh, we'll sell you shit that uh, yeah. the state next door will not. <laughs> Pennsylvania's motto is please stop here. <laughs> <laughs> fireworks, fireworks, fireworks. Uh, <laughs> all right, Kanye got kicked off. <laughs> Kanye got kicked off of Twitter for twelve hours. Who would who should we really ban on Twitter and why, Zach? Oh. I mean, it's a ah, who should be banned off Twitter? Yeah, uh, I think Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Yeah, he let's take that guy down a peg. God knows he. <laughs> well, what I mean, Jim like Carrey he's already down a peg, but he's just he just keeps saying crazy shit, and I'm just like, man, like you, you know, you were funny when you were talking out of your butt. Now you want to fucking be. You know, Brando. I, I don't know. It's it's too much. <laughs> Wait, catch me up. What is Jim Carrey? I, this is not in my feed. What is Jim Carrey saying that it's upsetting you so badly? He said some shit about, like, anti-vaxxing. He just, like, has, like, a bunch of, like, political statements to make. But he's Canada. He's Canadian. See, I get it. See, that's how American I am. I said Canada. <laughs> he's um, Canada-ish. <laughs> I didn't say it was before the yeah. If you're from Canada, you're called cannabis, right? <laughs> 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 no, that's only here in BC. Oh, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, fuck Harry. Well, I think he's. I think he's in line, though. It seems like we're uh, we're only willing to take um, negative feedback from outsiders that are like from uh, people from other countries that are now living in our country. That seems to be the new the new move. Everybody on late night television that makes fun of this country is from another country. So maybe that's the move. Maybe he. Maybe he's smart. Maybe he's an evil genius. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> The hedgehog was fucking amazing. Really smart move. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is a weird. This is a, turned into a weird uh, Jim Carrey bashing session. In, to be to be completely transparent, uh, both Zach and I would gladly have done that role for half the price <laughs> that Jim Carrey got. So just to be fair, I would have done it free. <laughs> Alex, who should be banned off Twitter? And and I bet you have a lot of. I bet you have like a specific person who's been trolling you that you can go. This guy should definitely be banned. Not again, not really. I don't really get bothered that much, honestly. I was like, I don't know, maybe I the first thing that came to mind was was Trump, but then yeah. I kind of like to keep tabs, so I you know let him yeah. stay. I, I'm very like, uh, I'm too passive for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I who should be killed on Twitter <laughs> <laughs> live on Twitter? Um, okay, Dan so <laughs> okay. I would watch that. Um, I think I think more people would watch that than would watch me living. I think that would be. Here's the thing. I think I think my answer might might uh, pair well with her answer uh, is okay. because I think I think if you have trolled somebody more times than you have followers, you're off. That's it. If oh. once you've trolled more times than the number of your followers, if you can't keep your followers up more than your twi more than your Twitter trolls. You're out. That's it. Yeah, that's like a weird. It's like a weird. And, oh, and yeah. Twitter does that now with an algorithm where you can't follow a certain number of people, right? If you if you haven't been followed by a certain number of people, so that's just, it'd be the same. Right. Uh, they should have the same thing for trolls. Yeah. You can't troll a certain yeah. number of people if you don't. That's I like insane. That. I think that's good. I think we can work that into the algorithm. And then to Alex's point, um, the Trump thing. I, I don't know that he needs to be on Twitter, especially since that apparently he has the the power to ban uh, social media applications as of Monday. Did you see? Did you see that there's a dude who started a Twitter account where he literally just tweeted Trump's tweets and he got banned immediately? Block, 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 <laughs> like block. So we need to start. We need to start a, just an app called Trumper where he just does his own stuff. I think that would be the move. Um, and then it's not. And then it doesn't. And then it's not uh, susceptible to things like uh, getting a fan base on TikTok and then getting it completely removed or Vine or whatever. Those <laughs> What's it's fucked up because something about like having a 15 second video is just really upsetting to all of us because there's been like 12 of those apps and every time we get that thing canceled, so it's a bummer. Uh, all right, let's um. Let's do this. I really like this game, so I'm going to skip ahead. No, actually, I've 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 neglected to ask you guys all of the questions that we had uh, that we had <laughs> anticipated asking you. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Uh, Zach, you lived with your parents for part of the pandemic. Tell us about that. Yeah. So uh, I had a friend who, um, like, I, I I the pandemic happened. I had to move back home, and uh, I remember telling people, especially people that were still in New York, they were like, "Hey, what? You're living back home?" And I'm like, "Yeah." They're like, "Man, I'd rather be homeless." Then live back home. And I was like, yeah, I tried that for a month. It sucked. I missed my race car bed. And my mom's was gone. So, so yeah, I moved back home. Um, and, uh, I, caught, I caught them banging, uh, which was weird. Uh, I didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, but it was the first time ever I caught my parents banging. And uh, I, I was on the road, called them. And they didn't answer. My mom's like the super overbearing Italian mother. And I usually get like the FBI called if I don't answer a text right. within 50 seconds. So I call again. This is two hours later. They're still not answering. I'm like, wow, they might be dead. Uh, so I go back to the house and they're just splayed out on the couch. And I'm like, oh, how you guys doing? And they're sitting there eating Klondike bars in the middle of the afternoon. And, I'm, and I personally, when I'm done with sex, since I quit smoking, I eat a freeze pop. Uh, so I was like, oh, wow, the frozen treat doesn't fall too far from the freezer here, does it? <laughs> <laughs> so I have a new game for Zach. It's, uh, it's uh, watch them marry, watch them bang, watch them kill your parents. Which, uh, <laughs> uh, Alex, what's, uh, what's the worst accident you've ever been in? I think I know what you're talking about. I broke both my arms once. Simultaneously. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the same time, I was in middle school, and uh, we were in PE, we were running the track, and uh, somebody left some shoes tied together, so I tripped over those, flew forward. We were all sprinting. We were all wait, like, yeah. Wait, you, wait, wait, you, you tripped on someone. At, so the gag is that you tie someone's shoes together, and yeah. then they fall, but someone tied their own shoes together, and then you fell, which is pretty, incre which they, is pretty impressive. They tossed them out. They tossed them out in front of everybody, so it was like. Oh, really? A, yeah, like a trap. And so <laughs> I, was, I was the one that hit it and I just flew forward and landed like on my arms and then all my friends ran me over. 
So I broke both my arms, but they didn't believe me. So then uh, the teacher made me walk the track for an hour while everybody else was doing their shit. And then I, uh, I had to carry all my books and shit to my next class like this. And um, some girl tried to help ah. me. And she was like, she can do it. Don't help her. And she followed what? us through the hallway to make sure no one helped me. Where did you, did you go, this is crazy. Did you go, first of all, first of all, when you first tell this story, I was like, oh, you went to school like at Looney Tunes University where they're just like throwing out <laughs> yeah. like, like banana peels and making them fall. Yeah. And I found out oh, during the story that you went to some like uh, 1940s like nunnery uh, school where they just like hit you and tell you that you're a liar. Not and either. now it sounds like you went to school in prison. So where did you go to school? This is so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> and incidentally, all of those sound like the beginning of a porn film. All of those <laughs> Let me help scenarios. With that, because creepily enough, the same gym teacher who was a girl would stand in the locker room while we were all changing and showering and like intently watch us. Yeah. And when people started like putting up shower curtains and shit, she took the doors off the bathrooms and she threw all the shower curtains away. Wow. She was like, I need to know what you're doing in there. I like, like the idea hey, that... I like the idea they would just put a window in there, but the window doesn't doesn't window anything. It's just a window on a on a ledge, and then just she just looks through the through the uh, the blinds. No, the blinds. Just standing there, standing there like <laughs> this the whole time, yeah. watching intently. And I'm like, I kind of want to change <laughs> by myself. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, so then after school, I, I I tried to go to a nurse, like they wouldn't let me call my mom. So after school, I walked out like this. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was like, oh I was like, hey. Can we go to a doctor? <laughs> this is crazy. Um, I everybody, it gets better. Every, are you still, oh, the story's not over. It's not. I'm sorry. It'll be over soon. <laughs> I just, oh, I'm like, I hey, I lived uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> I had two lime green casts. Yep. I had a play that night. I was the lead female role. I had a white dress with two lime green fucking casts. And one of my lines, the lead guy had to fall off his horse and break his arm. And so one of my lines was, what? You've broken your arm? And the entire audience just uproarious laughter. <laughs> and after, people were coming up to me apologizing because they thought it was a gag and they realized it wasn't. So I was like, I'm so sorry, I laughed. I thought it was a joke. I apologize. <laughs> I, love, I love when a performance gets, it has that extra little piece and then it gets that laugh that you don't expect. And I like watching non-comedians react to that laugh that they didn't expect. It's one of my favorite things to see. Because I, I can see them uh feel for the first time what we feel all the time and then we now we're numb to it so we try to play it off but when you get a laugh and you don't expect it it's like the most incredible thing um it's <laughs> it's fun because most podcasts that have porn stars on them different from mine always ask first question how'd you get into porn and then that story tells us exactly why you got into porn <laughs> <laughs> <Does it? laughs> i gotta be honest hearing that story i may be getting into porn <laughs> so yeah just let first, you guys first know. let's break your arms <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how i assume it starts <laughs> that, actually, that, is, that is a good that is a good premise is uh is like guy broke his arms can't jerk off let's start this yeah. porn. Uh, <laughs> definitely a porn that is definitely <laughs> jason um hold on let's finish writing this movie <laughs> 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 Jason, you uh, you say you enjoy you actually enjoyed the lockdown. What uh, what was what was what did you like about it? Well, I mean, first of all, I think I think we're learning uh, that we were never good at communication. I think mm -hmm. we we realized because we aren't able to like see people anymore. So even the people we know, we're like having all this miscommunication. Right. I think I think that's that's the difference uh, that I've figured out is that is that you just gotta you just gotta let people talk for a while because every once in a while, some of the, somebody will like land on something you're like oh you yeah you do think sometimes because you hear people say crazy like my well the, my thing is i've had some phone conversations with my girlfriend's mom and she's italian she's an italian mother so she's and she's like got all of the confidence of a ceo and all of the english skills of a immigrant <laughs> and she is i mean she she's like complaining to me she's like yeah i had to i had to go do dirty judy and i'm like whoa well, all right i'm like whoa ex what is this i'm like what did you have to do for money during this pandemic <laughs> and <laughs> and uh no she it turns out she meant jury duty 
Um, and I was like, I was like, that's, I'm like, you got to learn how to not mess that one up. That's, uh, <laughs> but, but that's the whole thing. Like I didn't like, sometimes she like lands on something brilliant. Like she was complaining about all the racist stuff going on and she was calling them the cuckoo clan. And I'm like, you know what? That fits. That really feels <laughs> more apropos. So sometimes, sometimes she hits this accidental genius curve, uh, I should look I should have known with the dirty Judy thing because the first time that I ever met her we went out to eat and we sit down at this table at this Italian restaurant and she goes who wants hepatitis and I'm like <laughs> like that is that is the worst possible way to tell me that my girlfriend has been sexually active a lot before me <laughs> she met she meant appetizers so it all we ironed it out but I mean you know it's just you figure out I figured out a lot more about communication that's, that's fantastic what an eloquent lady i like it yeah, um, she's great all right well that, that actually that that brings me to my favorite game uh we know a couple weeks where i found out that uh lyrics on the radio are shenanigans mostly uh i used to think it was just harry styles that was uh involved in saying things that didn't make any sense and i found out recently it's everybody uh so this week we're going to play a game called uh little wayne or shenanigans I'm going to read you three Lil Wayne lyrics. Uh, two of them are real. One of them I made up. You guys are going to have to identify which one is made up. Uh, I'm really excited. So let's do this. Lil Wayne or shenanigans. Are you guys ready? And you guys can play at home as well. Put it in the chat window. You guys ready? Ready. Yeah. Lil Wayne or shenanigans. Number one of round one. Yes, I do it big. Call me little astronomical. Wheezy F baby. And the F is for phenomenal. That's number one. Uh, number two, Young Money Militia, and I am the commissioner. You don't want to start wheezy because the F is for finisher. Number three, I play doctor with your girlfriend. That's my favorite position. Wheezy F champion, and the F is for physician. Uh, one, two, or three. Which one's fake? What do you think, Zach? Three. A hundred percent. Okay. Alex, what do you think? Oh, my God. That's difficult. I'm, I'm split between two and three. I think I'll go for two to be different. Number two, young man. Okay, uh, Jason. Uh, you know what? I was going to go with three, but to be fair, I have no idea. So I'll go with <laughs> one just okay. to balance everything out because if I, if I come out as the dumbest, then that is accurate. <laughs> okay, um, the, uh, the, the fake one is uh, I play doctor with your girlfriend. That's my favorite position. Wheezy F champion <laughs> and the F is for physician. Zach got it right. That's beautiful. I just love that, that, that the real lyric he used a PH instead of an F and I had to replicate it. I loved everything about it. All right. yeah. See, that's, it felt like you copied. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, it's got to be one of those. Gotta be one like, of those. He wouldn't stay position. <laughs> I know, phenomenal was the one. I was like, that sounds a little more like phenomenal. what he said. <laughs> uh, right, ready? Round two, round two, round two. Okay, number one. Just bought a new charm. Fuck the watch. I'll buy a new arm. You lukewarm. Just bought a new charm. Fuck the watch. I'll buy a new arm. You lukewarm. Number two, pull out game week. I'm everybody's father. I got 12 kids and I just shot some on your daughter. Number two, pull out game week. I'm everybody's father. I got 12 kids and I just shot some on your daughter. Number three, I got a hundred tats. I got a hundred million. I keep switching wifeys. You got to uncle Phil me. Number three, I got a hundred tats. I got a hundred million. I keep on switching wifeys. You got to uncle Phil me. Jason, which one's fake? One, two, or three. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go one. Um, I had a really good reason, but after hearing all those other words in between, I forgot it. So uh, I'm just <laughs> going to stick with, I may be the charm. dumbest. Number one, the number one was just bought a new charm. Fuck the watch. I'll buy a new arm. You lukewarm. Here's the thing. You wrote that. I think you wrote that because I think arm and warm sounded like it rhymed, but I think he does it audibly. And so I don't think he would have come up with arm and warm as rhyming. <laughs> that's well, my, well, that's well, my philosophy. Technically he's, ar he's, he's, he's a uh, rhyming charm, but I don't know. I don't, I don't have the screen. That's also doesn't rhyme with warm. <laughs> uh, <it's, laughs> Alex, Alex, one, two or three. I don't know. I was I was gonna go with three, but that was very convincing. <laughs> was it? Let me remind you, Alex. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm stupid. <laughs> I also in, the, in the dumb club. Let's do it. All right. Let's okay, do it. Number one. Number Solidarity. one. Solidarity. Uh, Zach, what do you think? One, two, or three? <laughs> I'm gonna go with three to be different. 
I just got a hundred tats. I got a hundred million. I keep on switching wifeys. You got Uncle Phil me. Uh, you guys are all wrong. The fake one is number two. Pull out game week. I'm everybody's father. I got 12 kids and I got some on your daughter. Um, what? And I'm really happy with that one. That's, uh, I feel good. And, and that one, that one would have killed the PG rating if we hadn't already. Well, so. <laughs> yeah. and it would have been at the right time in the show. It. <laughs> technically, technically, I'm not swearing there. So technically, that's still PG-13. Really? Yeah. That. That's how Disney. That's how Disney gets away with it. You say something. I mean, dirty. we've already we've already killed a lot of people in this show. Like, not on your daughter. <laughs> I mean, as far as felonies go, we are nuts. deep into this show. I didn't say not on your daughter. I think anyway. Either way, I think I'm within the right. <laughs> Just because you understood it doesn't mean it's not over uh, an 11 year old's uh, head. All right. Uh, uh, did anybody else bring around? Bring around? Oh. Bring around for their own. Yeah. Did anybody else bring a shenanigans around? Mm. I did not bring a shenanigans around, although I could do it. You could wing one? I could I'll wing. <laughs> okay. Go, Zach. You want to go, Zach? Jack's going to go. Yeah. I'll go. Um, so, uh, is this uh so Bon Jovi? Um uh uh oh oh living on a prayer, okay. I'm a cowboy on a steel horse I ride, or shark through the heart and blarts to blame. <laughs> um, I don't know what just happened. I'm gonna say number three. <laughs> Look, I got to be honest with you. When I listened to Bon Jovi, I was doing it on a very bad radio. So I feel like that last lyric sounds closer to anything else I heard. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> Alex, what do you That's think? That's what I heard make? growing up. I'm, I'm just enjoying the show at this point. Um, <laughs> Zach, which one's fake? Are you serious? You have to tell us. This is the format of the game. Don't That's be a... the last, the last one where I mentioned <laughs> Paul Dwarf, Paul Cop. You All have... right, welcome, welcome, Dan. Alex and I have been missing you in the dumb club. Uh, you just, uh, we saved you a no, spot though. We knew, here. Here. we knew you were headed. We knew you were headed. No, we have to, we have yeah. to play. You have to play to the, to the, to the formality of the show. Anyway, look, it right. doesn't help with your uh, with your head in a in a contorted manner over your own shoulder. I got to be honest with you; it doesn't make you look more sane. Uh, all right, moving on. The uh, let's play. Uh, let's play. What's left? Let's play questions for Dan. Do you have any questions for Dan? Dan, I want to ask you a question. Yes. Are you up for it? Yeah, go. For, yeah, go for it. All right. All right, I want you to uh, I want you to describe this year with the title of a movie. Oh, this is different from what I thought you were going to ask me. I would say, right? Um, <laughs> this is hard. This is hard. It's like, is... yes, it is. I did that on purpose. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, now you're in the dumb section, so we cannot let you feel comfortable at all. Um, <laughs> Dan's like, this was my ship. <laughs> you could do a movie or a song, either whatever comes to mind first. Uh, well, now I just have Bon Jovi songs in my head. Uh, <laughs> well, to be fair, I I feel like a lot of his lyrics, if placed properly, could describe this yeah. year. Yeah, I mean, I've been shot through the heart. Right. Ooh. Yeah. That's that's all that's in my head right now. That's all I can you think know? about. And right now, it feels like you're to blame. <laughs> <laughs> lyric is actually shot through the heart. <laughs> shot through the heart. <laughs> yeah. Um. I would just say there's probably a movie or a song called Famous Last Words. So I would say that that's that's that describes 2020. I like that you just yeah. came up. You're like, this should be a, a title. A song there's definitely a Billy Joel song <laughs> called Famous Last Words. Definitely. So, <laughs> murder, murder, I guess. So he's out of the dumb club. I don't know. I don't know. It feels like he just fastened his seatbelt in the dumb club. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, Dan. I tried. <laughs> Alex, what's a uh, what's a question for Dan? Mm, let's see. If I ever become a stand-up comedian, how do I get to be as funny as you? No, um, that doesn't seem at all like you're placating me. Um, <laughs> I, hey, I I lick ass for a living. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is what I was going to say to the notion of the thing is like, this is the whole, this is the other reason that the podcast started was because everyone in porn is taking jobs from everybody on this panel. Um, so basically all you need to do is just start doing comedy and you will have a better career than everybody on this panel, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, do, do it. Don't, don't do it. Uh, do it. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I gotta be honest with you. Licking ass is a great start to getting into stand-up comedy. Cause there's a I lot of that. It, it one of those for most things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's going to serve you well in life generally. You want to get something done. <laughs> it's yeah. absolutely oh, yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, um, yeah, definitely like you're, you're set up for all office politics. If that's your first move is you just lick yeah. ass. You, you eat ass until you're big enough to just get your ass ate. Yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> true. That is, it's yeah. Cold out there. Can I change my answer to the other one is uh, for the 2020, the, the movie, it's just called, I got my ass ate. And for sure that that's, that's a gotta be. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. But also, since we are live, I will say, if you want to get your ass ate, make sure it's clean. Yes. <laughs> duh. Now, yeah, is there... I would think that would be duh. Is but, there a standard? Because my standard's always been, I show up to her apartment and I look around, and if it's not, I'm like, mm. You know, that's... that's <laughs> I'm like, I'm like I feel like this... Oh. 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 Lance here from the Bald Club. We're going around to all the Zooms looking for the hottest bald heads out there. And we spotted one. We got a Mr. Petrovich in the house. <laughs> we want you to join us here at the Bald Club. You've got one of the hottest ones we've seen, and we want you to be part of it. So we're wondering, do you want to be part of this event? Okay, well, you're going to have to learn how to use audio first before you, <laughs> before you are able to, to join our club. because we do he, need, does he, he doesn't know how to use it. Ah, we're exactly. going to need to hear a verbal yes from you. Do you want to be part of, this event, part of this club? I am in. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Does anyone here have any questions about the ball club? This what is we the best do? thing that's ever happened to Zach, I gotta, uh, for sure. I've known him a long time. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm a winner. Yeah, we go around to all the Zooms and we, we check to see where the algorithm said this was one of the best balls we've seen. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> uh, ball club guy, um, the, I don't know if you know this, but he is newly bald. So this is a big honor for him. I don't I, see your video, Dan. Yeah, no, no, shut me off so we can keep okay. it four by four. Oh, fair. All yeah. right. Um, yeah, he newly, did, so Zach's newly bald. How do, how do you, so what's some good advice for somebody who's newly bald, I guess, bald club guy? Confidence. Oh, okay. You come out with confidence. Because, see, it's really not about being bald. It's about you as an individual on the inside. Sure. What they'll, do you tell you, they'll tell you it matters, but it doesn't. It's how you carry it. Okay. You know what are you, saying about are you like, bald on the inside? Hey, you shut up. What? You got a lot of hair over there. I got so much hair. <laughs> Listen. Uh, no, bald on the inside, no. <laughs> Very full on the inside. Do you, okay. let, do you have any female members in the ball club? Um, we got a few, yes. You know, we we didn't prior to 2016, but then times have changed, and now we have a whole we have a we have a, a good 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 amount actually. I have okay. a question. Yeah. Uh, if I meet a bald woman, is it impolite to ask if the carpet matches the drapes? Uh, you know, we haven't really considered that one over here. Okay, <laughs> um, I just want to know. Oh, I know well, we're living in a different world. We're living in a different woman, world. I will say, no, it's not impolite. Okay, fair. It's not impolite. It's not impolite. <laughs> yeah. Okay, interesting. That's, That's impolite. an interesting question right there. Well, then let me ask you this, uh, Lance. Yeah. Um, does the carpet match the drapes for you? For me? Oh, no yeah. way. This is just, I, I like to keep it all natural everywhere else. I see. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Looks, looks like this down there. I'm with you. Like this down there. You gotta kind of like search through it. Yeah. Whoa, that seems like a personal thing. He's like the um, opposite of me. My hair stops below my chin. I'm, I yeah. am, uh, yeah, I'm Native American yeah. from the chin down. Well, that's not the club we're looking for here today. Um, <laughs> okay. Lance. Oh, it's only a top bald club. Yeah, it's a hey. top bald club. Okay. Lance, Sorry. is it true what they that's say? If you sh what? Is it true what they say? If you shave your head, does it make, uh, does it make your entire head look bigger? Well, yeah, it does. Yeah, my head actually, um, it's very small unless I shave and then it becomes nice and big. Nice. Yeah. Well, how does Zach participate in the bald club? And yeah, I would like love to know. Yeah, what are, what are first of all, you wish I was going to tell you right here. Once he's in the club, he'll find out how fantastic it is. I One see. thing we do each summer 
Um, you know, we didn't really do it this summer due to uh, worldwide events, but um, usually in the summer we have an all bald slip and slide party out there. Oh so. my God. What? First, yeah, first rule of bald club, by the way, recruit. But second rule is don't talk about bald club. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. that's not, you're in the wrong club. Is that the wrong <laughs> club? <laughs> about it. Sorry. Yes. Maybe that's a billiards club. Maybe that, you know what? That was a billiards club. Oh, Never billiards mind. Club. I mixed them up. A uh, ball club guy. Yeah. I mean, what I get it? my BLDs mixed up. Ball club guy. Is it, um, is it, is it disrespectful to touch someone's bald head without asking? Yeah, it is. Okay. How, what's the, <laughs> what's the proper way to ask to touch a bald head, I guess? You say, hey, that's a beautiful bald head. Would you mind if I gave it a rubber doo doo? <laughs> okay, I'm going to head out of here because I feel like the questions are starting to get a little invasive and I feel like people are trying to crack the ball club code. So I I'm just going to say this, Mr. Petrovich, we're going to send you a private message. We got you. We see your algorithm here. We see this ball shining brightly. We are very proud and very excited to have you as part of the ball club coming here shortly. I'm honored. I'm honored. Thank you so much for choosing. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'm going to have to call my mom. That was huge. That was huge, Zach. Uh, congratulations. Um, congratulations on joining your new sex cult. Yeah. yeah. I like how he said he was going to head out. Yeah. That was a solid pun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting serious sex cult vibes, so just make sure you move <laughs> to your first meeting, Zach. Do oh. you recommend any robes for his first sex cult? No, because okay. you, know, you just take every... Sex cults don't do the robe thing, I don't think. No. no, excuse me, guys. I, I think this is my first sex cult. What's that? You guys think this is my first sex cult? That is true. I forgot uh, about your first story. She didn't hear your first story. <laughs> no, no, no. She <laughs> ordered a domino. <laughs> All right, Zach, do you have any questions for Dan on your on, on the heels yeah. of your big win? I do. So, Dan, uh, on your Instagram story, you love to go throughout Hoboken, New Jersey and have these huge fines. Yeah. Uh, what is the best huge find that you've ever had? No, I had a good day. I had a good day the other day where everything, everything that I found, I really wanted to, to, to take. Uh, but it, when it comes down to huge fines, it's like basically I find trash on the side of the roads that are, uh, that are totally salvageable. But I don't have the vehicle to, to maintain any of my huge fines. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's tough. Every, you know what? I have these weird flashbacks where every time I see like a suitcase on the side of the road, I just assume there's a body in it. So half of me wants to take the suitcase and half of me wants to stay far away. But I kind of want to find out um, whether or not there's a body in every suitcase I see on the sidewalk. No, my favorite thing that, uh, that ever happened in a huge find was when, uh, was when you and I went around Manhattan and every time I'd find a huge find, you would just plow your, your, uh, your body through it, your, uh, your hair. <laughs> Uh, that was I fun. I didn't you. know. I didn't know that you had a had a had a prior skill set as like a furniture crusher. I'm a, I'm a furniture demolition specialist. Uh, it's I, I I minored in it in college. Yeah. So. My favorite. My favorite. Yeah, part we knew about that. We knew about that. That's why we came in. <laughs> my favorite part is when oh, you hi. hit. Is when you hit the furniture, it doesn't break, and then oh, there's like fun. a couple seconds, and then eventually it breaks through. That's my favorite part. Um, <laughs> What else? Anything we didn't cover? Anything that you guys wanted to deal with that we didn't deal with um, on today's show? What any just just uh, loose thoughts that you had that you that should be covered? I just want to tell you all how much I cherish you. Is I don't know if this is too soon, but I really feel like this has been a great time for sure. Um, I appreciate I appreciate that, and thank you for being here as a panelist. Yeah. Let's shout People out don't our... use the word cherish enough, by the way. I it, think we throw it, love around like nobody's business, but yeah. cherish. That's in the wedding vows too. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of cherish. Yeah. Yeah. That would that would be fun to just tell your to tell your girl you just like wake her up in the middle of the night and go I cherish you, I obey you. I actually you whisper right over her occasionally. I'll go cherish me. <laughs> <laughs> then she slaps me. So yeah, it That's sounds fun. like a fun finishing move <laughs> yeah. on a porn and in uh, Street Fighter. <laughs> Cherish him, right? <laughs> uh, shout out yeah. real quick to, to the to the the the, uh, the originator of the Bald Club, Lance Weiss. Party with Lance for coming in and Zoom bombing us here. He's got a business called MeetingBombs.com. If you want to uh, have your Zoom meetings or uh, really your family gatherings bombed in by a professional, he's your guy. MeetingBombs.com. Check that out. Um, 
it's like it's like OnlyFans, but um, but more PG, I would say. Um, so let's do this. <laughs> Uh, there's a way that you can review the show. Thank you for everybody who's watching the show. There's a way that you can review the show. It doesn't take a lot of time to review the show. It means a lot to us to get a good review. If you had a good time, please give us a good review. Uh, we love it when that happens. If you had a bad time on this show, just keep your fucking mouth shut. Nobody likes to snitch. All right. Let's go around the circle. <laughs> And you guys share how to follow uh, you on the internet. Uh, if you guys got, if you guys are on the show, you got an email from me, most likely. And there's a way that you can follow these people on there. Give them a, a share, a like, and subscribe. The holy trinity of social media. But in the meantime, Zach, how do we find you? How do we follow you? So uh, on all platforms: YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can find me at Zachy Peanuts. Z a c h y Peanuts, like the allergy. Uh, I also have uh, two new podcasts coming out. Uh, with Drop 10 Podcast Network. Uh, first is going to be Zachy Hour, pretty general, uh, talking to people from all walks of life, uh, just an hour where we get pretty uh, hammered on uh, air. And then uh, we're also doing <laughs> Broadway. <laughs> we're also doing Broadway for Breeders. It's the Straight Guys Guide to Broadway, where you guys find out that I actually have a BFA in theater. And we talk to people from the Broadway industry, uh, people who have been on Broadway. For I better be on that stupid podcast. Huh? I better be on that podcast. I love my Broadway. <laughs> yeah, no, you're on. You're on. <laughs> yeah. Let's stick to it. <laughs> That's how easy it is to get on my podcast, Jason. We have oh. a big thing. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, uh, I had a great time. Uh, Zachy Peanuts, as I said, at Zachy Peanuts, Z A C H Y Peanuts. Alex, how do you find you? How do you follow you? How do you pay for your porn? All right. Uh, well, I'm glad I found out that I can just say you better have me on your podcast and I can be on Zach's. So um, that's all you got to do. <laughs> you that's how you get what you want to be. And, uh, <laughs> so I, it's super easy um, to find all my links. Go to allmylinks.com slash A L E X X X C O A L. That's it. They're all there. It's a big old fucking it. list. Jason, how do we find you? How to follow you? Well, if you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, it's this right here at Jason Solomon. But I don't know. I've got a podcast called Jason's Failed Podcast. Uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you're all welcome to be on it uh, anytime. <laughs> no big threats needed. <laughs> no, I look. It's it's a failed podcast. So the worst you're gonna do is validate its name. I mean, you know, I mean, you got no nothing to lose on my podcast. I um, <laughs> and uh and uh, you follow me on youtube on uh on the instagram i do uh if you still got access to a swimming pool i got i got my uh i got a character named don hoder who teaches swim lessons and he don't know how to swim so it's fun it's Thanks. fun times uh, and by so, far by far the best like chesapeake area accent that i've heard from a non-chesapeake area delco movie. it's my delco accent <laughs> we go. Dudes. Dudes, do it Don Hoder, Don Hoder, swim lessons from a dude who don't know how to swim. <laughs> Go Eagles. I love it. So, uh, my name is Dan Fregolette. Uh, I got the Porn Stars Reveal podcast. Drops a new episode every Monday. Um, check those out. We're we're trying to we're trying to make some some impact in the sex positive world. Also, we've started to rebroadcast these podcasts, these this show as a podcast on the old Comedy's Best Kept Secret Tour podcast. When we were traveling the country together, we would do podcasts on the road. Uh, since road is dead for a while, uh, these have made it to iTunes, Google Play, all the things. Check out these as we broadcast on there. If you haven't seen uh, all 65 of these shows that we did during the quarantine, <laughs> they're going to be there. So check them out. Uh, all the things. Thank you to my panels for being here. Thank you to my guests uh, and everybody. In, Zach, 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 Zach. Yeah, yes, we'll, yes. We'll, we'll yes. see you soon. <laughs> uh, it's the comedy's best kept that. secret tour zoom we have a new episode five o'clock eight o'clock ten o'clock at midnight eastern standard time every friday uh through the quarantine check it out the world's opening up a little bit but in the in the rare occasion that it's going to close back down through winter and you don't want to go outside and do things again uh come see us come hang out with us uh comedy's best kept secret tour.com thank you guys for being here